This is DeathfireD coming at you with another YouTube video and this one is kind of a sequel to my previous video on how to remap certain keys and function keys on your wireless or Bluetooth remote that's connected to Android. This one is particularly about devices that are rooted. The difference between this video and the last video mainly is the last video was using a third party app that allowed you to remap the keys on your your uh, keyboard. The problem is that you you'd have to set that app as your default keyboard or um, yeah your default input method and a lot of people kind of find that sketchy because you have an app that's essentially listening to every keystroke that you make so there's no telling that an update could turn into a keylogger that's sending your information to some third-party company so that's where key layout files come into play if you have a rooted Android device then there is a simpler way to remap your keyboard without using any third-party apps now your device has to be rooted I repeat it has to be rooted there's no way to edit key layout files and get them back on the device and have them working unless the device is rooted so let's ex let's jump into what key layout files are so Many computers, not just Android devices, have a wide variety of key layout files. They're essentially files that are made specifically for keyboards and wireless devices. <clears throat> and when you first connect your wireless device to the computer, it will search for a vendor number and a product ID, and maybe a version number as well. And if it finds uh, a key layout with that information, then it'll use it. But if it doesn't, <clears throat> no, excuse me, it'll work down a hierarchy until it finds a file that's related to your device. And if it doesn't find a file, there's always a default or a generic key layout file that the, that the computer or the operating system will default to. So in Android's case, as you can see on this key layouts file page, it starts with the vendor ID, the product ID, and the version ID, and it works its way down to generic. Now the issue that a lot of wireless keyboards are running into, or you guys are running into, me too, is that when we buy our re-wireless remote or we're buying a generic Chinese knockoff, we're finding that certain keys just aren't working like you press the home button and it does nothing you press on the E button and it acts as a home button it makes no sense but that is because there's no uh, vendor key layout for those devices it's going to the generic right off the bat and for one reason or another Google has disabled and mapped certain keys to do certain things so a way around this is to save a copy of the generic key layout file and make your changes to it and then obviously change the name of it to the the vendor ID the product ID and the version or just the vendor ID and product ID and then throw it back into the key layout folder reboot the device and it should remap all of the keys on your wireless remote so this video is going to walk you guys through the steps that I took to do this. Let me pull up a picture. So this is the remote that I have. It's it's not the actual re remote. It is a generic Chinese knockoff. And like I mentioned, the home button doesn't work. The E acts as a home button. Um, the fast forward and reverse buttons weren't working. They were skipping to a next episode instead of actually fast forwarding or reversing so I wanted to fix those and they're common issues that a lot of people have with these types of remotes so I'm gonna cut to a clip of me showing you guys how to access the actual key layout files on my Android device and then I will show you another clip on how to get the vendor ID and the product ID so yeah let's cut to that 
I'm sorry if the camera's jittery. I'm trying to do this with one hand and control the remote with another. <laughs> I don't have a tripod with me. Sorry about that. So yeah, I use root browser, but you can use pretty much any type of file browser. Even the one, well actually, you need a file browser that allows you to access root folders. So I use root browser. So let's open this up. And we want to go to, I believe it's system, and then user, and then, woo, it went too far. Why are you doing that? Okay, so here's the key layout folder for my Android box. And like I described in the earlier in this video, my Android box came with a whole bunch of pre-installed key layouts. And you can see that by the, the vendor and then some number and then duck, which is actually product. And the number afterwards is the product ID. So you can also see that there's the generic file and the QWERTY key layout and this other one that I'm not really sure what it's for. But basically what you guys want to do is make a copy of this generic.kl file and uh, save it somewhere on your Android box as a backup just in case you screw this up somehow. And you also want to get this onto your computer or I guess you could edit it through here using a, um, a file editor. But I ended up emailing it to myself and editing on my personal computer. But like I said before, you're going to get that, edit it, and change the name to whatever the vendor ID is for your remote. Um, you don't want to save it as the generic file because what's going to happen is any future um, USB or Bluetooth remotes that you connect to this are going to use that as the, the key layout unless they have a vendor key layout already on this box or on your device. But in my case, I just don't want to mess with the generic file. Um, another thing that I want to point out is you can see the, the permissions, the little minus RW, minus R, minus minus R, minus minus. That shows that there's rewrite and write permissions for certain things. So I'm going to go down to the file that I made and show you that because what's going to happen is when you copy over your file, the permissions are going to be different and it's probably not going to work with your device until you change the permissions. So in mine, oops, I think I messed up. I want to see if I can do this. If, you, if you're using Root Explorer and you highlight the item and hold down the OK button on your remote, it will turn it that gold color. Then you're going to want to move the mouse up and hit the little hamburger menu up here and go to Properties. And you're going to want to slide over to Permissions or click it with your mouse. And this is what you want your permissions to be set up as. You want the owner to be write, uh, read and write. You want the group to be read. And you want others to be read. But when I carried it over, I ended up having read write for owner, read write for group, and others was completely blank. And the file did not work until I changed the permissions to what you see here. So be sure that they're set up like this and apply those changes and then reboot your device and it should work completely fine. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to go back and make sure that this is set correctly. Um, so yeah, that's it for this. So another thing earlier I mentioned that you could get the vendor and product ID through the MKR multi-language key map redefiner app that I showed in a previous uh, video on how to map things. If you open it up, we want to exit out of that because I'm no longer using it, but 
as you can see up at the top here, the first number, the HID, the first number is the vendor ID and the second one is the product ID. So that's a simple way that you can get this information. Um, obviously, if you search the Android market, there's plenty of different apps that will get this information for you. So if you want to go down that route, you can. I just ended up using this because I already had it installed. So yeah. All right. So once we have our key layout file on our computer, obviously we're going to want to rename it to the, the vendor ID and the product ID that we found in on our Android device using the, the program that I showed you in the last clip. So in my file, up here I added some comments so I know what I actually changed in this file. And I have, I remapped the F9 key to open up the recent apps. And I remapped the home icon to actually go to the Android desktop. I fixed the rewind and fast forward buttons. And I changed the E to now open up a web browser. Now obviously you guys can remap these to whatever you want. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to give you a quick walk down. So off to the left here, these are the keys that are actually, or the key codes for the keys that are on your remote. So one is supposed to be escape, two is supposed to be one, three is supposed to be two, and so on and so forth. So if you had used um, the, the app that I showed you a few minutes ago to get the vendor ID and the product ID, there is a special tool in there where you can press on a key on your wireless keyboard and it will give you this information. Now certain function keys though, like the, the E button or the, let me open up the photo, or this button, if you press them, it will jump immediately into whatever that program is. So in this case, if you press it, it automatically opens up Android Music Player and it doesn't give you the key code. So for instances like that, I kind of had to just experiment. I uh, did a lot of testing back and forth until I finally got the keys that I needed. So yeah, these are the keyboard IDs or the, the keyboard numbers and then off to the right is what we're mapping them to. Now these names, they're called keyboard events. Android has a really good list of keyboard events if you go to this link right here, I'll include the links in the description below so you guys can just click on them. But basically, if you have a question about a certain keyboard event or you're, you're trying to find one that works for a certain key, like if you don't know what the envelope is, you can go to the envelope and let's see what it says. It says uh, envelope sp special function key used to launch a mail application. So now we know what the envelope does. Um, so yeah, you can just scroll down the list here and click on events and use them in your, your key layout file. So let's scroll down a bit. So this key, this is the home button that I mapped. For some reason in the generic file, it was commented out. So basically when when something's commented out like this, it doesn't work, which explains why pressing the home key did absolutely nothing. So I simply uncommented it and added home after it. So now the key layout or Android knows that when I press the home button, it's going to go to the home page. And then further down, let's see, these keys are the uh, rewind and fast forward. They were originally set to media next and media, media previous, which explains why pressing them ended up going to like the next episode of something or a previous episode. So what I did was I ended up making a copy of them and putting it underneath and then commenting out the original just in case I ever wanted to go back to it. And uh, I ended up finding the key event called media fast forward and media rewind. So I use those to remap those keys to fast forward and rewind and that solved my issue. So it's really that simple guys. There's a whole bunch of things that you can remap in here that 
your keyboard may not even have so uh, yeah experiment but keep in mind though that if you screw something up you could be stuck if if you let me reword it so if you only have one wireless remote for your Android device and you happen to screw up the mapping and you don't have another wireless remote then you're screwed there's no way to fix that unless you're able to remote into your Android device and uh, bring back the generic file so keep that in mind don't go overboard and make sure you have backups of everything and make sure you have a second um, remote of some kind that you can use so yeah that's pretty much it and now uh, once you uh, make your edits you save the file make sure that the name is set correctly you're gonna wanna get it back onto your Android device and uh, like the previous video that I showed you you're gonna wanna make sure that the permissions are set correctly because if they're not you're gonna find that this layout just won't work and you'll be racking your brains wondering why it's not working it's in the folder and yeah so just make sure that the permissions are set and uh, once you get the file into that folder the, the keyboard folder the blah 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 the key layout folder you're gonna wanna reboot your Android device and uh, hopefully it'll work right off the bat if it doesn't I ended up rebooting mine twice and it finally got it on the second time and after that it's been working ever since so in the future if I ever want to get another Android device or a Android box I could just copy this key layout file over to my other Android box and my remote will work with that one next so that's pretty much it guys it's it's pretty straightforward there's a wealth of information on this this um, Google key events and key layouts pages you could do a lot of nifty things there's uh, special fallbacks that you can do so if you're using like a web browser and you want a special key to fall back to bookmarking a page instead of doing something else you could do that too um, I don't know a whole lot about it I haven't experimented that much with it I just went in and remapped the things that I needed to remap but yeah I highly encourage you guys to read this information um, there's even a, a, a validate key maps thing but you have to download the program and compile it and or run an emulator which I'm not gonna get into maybe I'll do it in another video so uh, yeah and Till the next video guys if you like this one give me a thumbs up give me a subscribe give me a comment below um, give me suggestions that's pretty much it peace out